Welcome everyone to the Heidelberg Engineering Academy. Thank you for joining our course, Spectralis Region Finder, presented by Jocelyn Gageway. My name is Eva Kroniker and I'll be your moderator today. As you'll notice, your phone lines are muted and this just helps prevent any feedback on the line. However, since this is an interactive forum, please feel free to ask questions at any time. Now, without further ado, I'm pleased to present Jocelyn Gageway. Good morning, everybody. I'll be presenting the course of Spectralis Region Finder. And without further ado, here we go. The Region Finder software provides a semi-automatic quantification of areas of atrophy in Blue Peak Blue Laser Autofluorescence Imaging. An area of reduced signal intensity is like a bathroom. Adding a region is like filling it to a certain level. As you adjust the growth power, the water level in the tub rises. If the parameter is set too high, the bathtub overflows and the region begins to encompass healthy tissue. The goal is to adjust the growth power precisely so that only the region is covered, as if the bathtub is filled to the rim. Select a patient record. Right-click on the desired image and select Region Finder. Select the images to be included in the progression by checking the boxes. Click OK. The software will launch and will be ready for use. For an initial exam, you have your working image on the right, a comparison image on the left, and a button to print your regions on the bottom. Double-click the middle of the atrophic area of the working image. This will create a new region highlighted in bright blue. Adjust the growth power using the mouse wheel or the up and down arrows on the keyboard. For larger adjustments, the page up and page down keys may be used. For additional regions, you repeat this procedure. If you add additional atrophic areas, the prior regions will be a darker blue compared to the newly created region. To select a region, click the area of interest on the working image. The selected region will be highlighted in bright blue, and all other regions will become dark blue. It is also possible to select a region from the results list. Right-click on the working image. Select Remove Region from the menu, repeat as needed, or select Remove All Regions. A C point may need to be redefined in order to more accurately define the borders of a region. To change a C point, follow this procedure. Select a region, place the cursor above the area where the new C point should be set, right click, select Redefine Seed from the menu. The cursor position will be defined as a new seed and all dependent variables will be recalculated. This may change the shape of the region. Right-click where the edge of the circle should be. Select Block Circle. Left-click where the center of the circle should be. This should define a circle constraint of the proper size. If needed, click the edge of the circle and drag it to a more precise position. Right-click where the constraint should start. Select Block Line. Left click at the point where the line should end. If needed, click and drag the line to a more precise position. This function allows examination of the underlying morphology normally covered by the colored regions created by the software. Create a region, press and hold the control key. This toggles between the outline and the filled region. Define a region. Slowly increase the growth power. Allow the region to grow until it creeps into the blood vessels. 
At this point, decrease growth power and return the region to the demarcated area of atrophy. Define a linear constraint at each point where the region grew into the blood vessel to act as supporter. Regions can be separated by placing blocking lines between them. This prevents the region from growing across any spared tissue between lesions. A normal fovea is darker in color because of macular pigment absorption. Sometimes, atrophic areas may form a ring of atrophy around the fovea, leaving the fovea unaffected, a phenomenon known as foveal sparing. In a situation involving foveal sparing, draw a circular constraint around the fovea to prevent it from being included as part of the atrophic region. In the case of peripapillary atrophy, draw a circular constraint around the optic nerve head in order to prevent it from being included in the atrophic region. In a follow-up image, you still have your working image on the right, but a comparison image on the left. Your comparison image is a previous image from an earlier exam. Under the Change Analysis tabs, your reference images are on the left, your follow-up images are in the center, and any analyses are all the way to the right. In the Working Image drop-down menu, select a follow-up image with no defined regions and constraints. Click Copy Region. Select the parameters to be copied. Click OK. The software will copy the regions for you. At this point, use the mouse or keyboard controls to adjust growth powers in order to precisely map changes to the atrophic areas. C-point coordinates may not appear in the same location as they are image-specific. First, launch the Region Finder software. Click the Change Analysis tab. Open the Reference Image drop-down list and select the desired date. Open the Follow-up Image drop-down list and select the desired image. Click the Analysis Parameter drop-down menu. Select one of the options to visualize the data. The Display Option Change Map will calculate and display the difference between the reference and follow-up images. An increase in region size will be highlighted in orange, and a decrease will be highlighted in green. For best results, exclude any images with alignment errors from analysis. A decrease in region size and geographic atrophy may indicate an alignment error. Select Progression Movie from the Analysis Parameter drop-down menu. Click Play. Click 
quick pause to halt playback. Use the slider to manually move to the date of interest. All parameters calculated in the Change Analysis tab are listed in the Analysis Summary chart. Each exam date lists the number of region defines, along with analysis information. Select the Change Analysis tab. Click the Flickr button. The baseline and follow-up images will begin to flicker. The flicker speed can be adjusted with the slider bar. In the Define Regions tab, click the Print button. The Print Spectralis Report dialog will open. Select Single Exam Report. Verify the correct print options, then click Print. In the Change Analysis tab, click the Print button. The Print Spectralis Report dialog box will open. For a change report, select Region Finder Change Report from the list. For a trend report, select Region Finder Trend Report and either time or exam date for the x-axis. For either, select all print options and then print. That was excellent. Thank you so much, Jocelyn, for that wonderful presentation. All right. We'll go ahead and begin accepting questions. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to click the question button or the chat button. And we have some questions coming in now. Should the doctors or technicians be using the software? Uh, that's actually dependent on practice protocol and technician and physician comfort. Um, ultimately, the, all of these um, regions can be changed at any time. So anyone can be trained to use the region finder software. And um, these regions can be changed. Nothing is permanent. So that, the decision can, that, that is a decision that can be made ultimately on the fly based on your practice needs. Great. Another question. How are multiple images on the same day handled? So if there are multiple Blue Peak images that were acquired on the same day, you would select one. They would all show up in that box, and you would just uncheck the ones that were not of high quality. You would pick the best one for the day. So using those check you. boxes underneath. All right, and another question. Is the algorithm able to calculate areas of hyperfluorescence? Not at this point. I 
do not know if that's something that they are planning to do, but at this point it is only areas of hypofluorescence. That's excellent information. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Jocelyn, for that excellent presentation. All right, and with that, on behalf of all of us here at Heidelberg Engineering, I'm Eva Kroniker. For those of you on the East Coast and in the Midwest, have a wonderful afternoon. And for those of you here on the West Coast, enjoy the rest of your day. And to all of you, thank you again for joining the Heidelberg Engineering Academy.